So uh, you might have thought it was advertising. Some things have a better advertising budget or that some things are higher quality, the best stuff wins out. Um, but uh, what a lot of research shows, it's actually not always about quality or about advertising. It's really about social influence. Contagious is all about the science behind social transmission, why people talk about and share one thing rather than another, and how companies, individuals, and organizations can apply these ideas, these key principles, to drive their products, ideas, and behaviors to catch on and become popular. I think sometimes in all the hype around social media, um, we think more about the technology and less about the underlying psychology. Um, I often like to think about MySpace, which was very popular a few years ago, big, big site. Everyone was saying, okay, we need a MySpace strategy, we gotta have a MySpace strategy. Now if you focused all on MySpace, you'd wonder why you spend all your resources on that thing that no one uses anymore. And so to me, it's less about the technology and more about the underlying psychology that drives people to talk and share. The first is social currency. The idea there is sort of we talk about things that make us look good, that uh, shape how others see us, so we talk about things that make us look smart rather than dumb or in the know rather than out of touch. Think about the first time you saw Gangnam Style, for example. Sharing that with someone else made you look smart, like you had the inside track on what was going on in culture. Triggers is about uh, being top of mind. So if something's on the top of your mind, it's highly accessible. It's more likely to be tip of tongue. More likely to talk about it because we're thinking about it. So you might have thought that we share positive emotions, but we avoid sharing negative emotions. So maybe we share things that, like we got a promotion or we're something really excited about, but we don't share things that make us unhappy or angry. Things you do when you're angry differ from the things you do when you're sad. When you're angry, you want to take action. Your blood is pulsing, you're fired up, you want to do something. When you're sad, you sort of want to curl up in a ball and, and you know, take a nap or you know, eat a bowl of ice cream or you know, watch your favorite movie. And what we find, same thing on the positive side, excitement is activating, contentment is deactivating. And we find that these uh, exciting, activating emotions, whether they're positive or negative, drive people to share. I think people often think that certain products are naturally talk talk worthy, you know, uh, new cars or Hollywood movies or Apple's newest gadget, whereas mundane products just aren't going to get talked about and shared. So mouthwash, for example, uh, toilet paper, or even household appliances like, let's say, your blender. Great example of a company called Blendtec. They make blenders and have this great series of videos where they take things like iPhones, they drop them in the blender, and you get to watch what happens when this blender cuts through right, a piece of technology or golf balls or Bic lighters. And people have shared these videos over 100 million times for a blender, and you'd think, well, why would anyone talk about it and share a blender? But they figured out how to make that blender remarkable. And then last but not least, we talk about stories. Uh, and obviously lots of press and attention about stories now, but there the idea is really building a Trojan horse. A story or a message that everyone wants to pass along, but carries your brand or your benefit or your information along for the ride. Not every story that's good catches on, right? Some of this is driven by the shape of social networks as well. So if somebody has a story that's a really great, interesting story, but they're not connected to many other people in the network, it's unlikely that it's going to diffuse broadly. Big companies or presidents or other sorts of folks that are prominent often have an easier time getting their message out because they have a big megaphone to share it through, uh, whether it's television, advertising, or other sorts of things. But even someone that has a small megaphone, you know, a corner coffee shop or a yoga studio or a, an upstart website that doesn't have a lot of money for advertising, if they can think about why people share information and use that to craft their message, craft their content, that will be more likely to be passed on. I think some people think it's random why things go viral, that it's luck or it's chance. Um, and actually what our research shows is that it's, it's not. You can boil these things down into a science. Um, just like we talk about and share things that make us look good, there are other psychological drivers of sharing. And so we can't guarantee that you can make something viral, but you can guarantee to improve its batting average. How is technology changing your world? Join the conversation at tvo.org slash pull.